Hello and welcome to Jesse James Beads. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Now, as I understand it, it is noontime on the East Coast, so just about good afternoon to you. Just about. It's 5 pm here in Blighty, where it's a little bit dingy after quite a pleasant, sunshiny, if somewhat cold day. So say hi, let me know that you are indeed there, and we're going to work today with bead soup. I'm just going to check in to make sure that we are in fact broadcasting because sometimes I get a little bit concerned that actually it's just me talking to myself. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Good to see you Trudy and Teresa and MD Shaquille, Maria and Kay are in. If I've missed anyone I'm terribly sorry it does tend to zoom past quite quickly. I hope that you had a lovely day so far anyhow. And we are going to work today with bead soup. So what is bead soup? If you are an avid Jesse James bead lover like myself, then sometimes you might not necessarily use every single bead in your collection. So you end up with what is lovingly referred to as bead stew or bead soup. So I've got a little small collection of beads. Now let's see if I can show them to you without tipping them all over everything. There we go. So that's what your bead soup might look like if you collect your Jesse James beads. Sometimes I simply want to use every single part of a strand or a collection in a project, and sometimes there might be one or two left over. So I'm going to just very briefly show you on the overhead camera now an idea for using your bead soup up. This is a very old project of mine made with garnets, but the technique is very similar to this. And here's a piece that I made with the Starry Night collection. These are all from the Starry Night collection. I happen to be a massive fan of that particular painting by Van Gogh. When I was looking into uh, learning a little bit more about art a few years ago, he was certainly one of the most interesting painters that I enjoyed. Of course, Horses for courses, we all love different things. So I know that this one fits me. And this is the type of project we're going to create today. So this is lovingly known as a chaos bangle. Why chaos? Well, you don't need to be an expert in wire work to make this. It isn't about precision. It's about having a bit of fun, making something that you can love. There might even be a story with every single bead in your collection. Let's just pop over to those comments and see who is there. Lots and lots of wonderful people joining me today. Sadly, I can't see any of those comments at the moment. So thank you for hanging out with me today. It's a hugely appreciated. Uh, hopefully I will be able to see if there are any questions as we move through. I'll just leave that side up and let's see if we can just move things around a bit and catch up with those. Being expert is not necessary. I am all in, says Jennifer. Well, absolutely. So sometimes with wire, with wire wrapping, with wire work, with wire art, people can feel a little bit like, gosh, there's absolutely no way I can do that. And I know for about four years, that's exactly how I felt. I was very concerned that the things I would be creating wouldn't be up to scratch. Well, with this design, up to scratch is, is entirely down to you. You get to decide what it looks like. There's no right or wrong answer. It's all going to be a little bit interesting. So if I show you the piece that I made a very long time ago now, this is the nuts and bolts of the design. We're going to create two matched rings to begin with in a heavier wire. So I've elected to use 16 gauge. It's a round wire. If you particularly wanted to use a square wire, you could. It just makes it ever so slightly more tricky for you. Round wire, as far as I'm concerned, is a good, suitable, beginner-friendly wire. So we're not going to be using a huge amount of the heavier gauge. As I said, that's the 16 gauge. That makes these two rings that go around the outside. What we are going to use is lots of the infilling wire. Now for this project, I've chosen to use 22 gauge, which is in the UK approximately equivalent to 0.6 millimeter gauge. And you can burn through quite a lot of it. So I tend to work off the reel in small pieces. So it's lovely to see you all here. I'm sorry I can't see all of the comments, but we're get, just going to plow on through. I'd like to drop you down now to the overhead camera.
make sure that we've got that nicely focused and down. Now I've tended to choose rondelles, rounds, there's even a square bead in there for this project. If I just pop in the bead soup a moment, let's see if that actually even fits. I don't think it's going to, you know, it's just so vast. Look at that. Can you hear that? This always makes me laugh. I love the noise of beads. I genuinely do. So you can use whatever beads are going to fit on your wire and into the design aesthetic that you wish to work with today. I will go through the wires as we move through the tutorial. So don't worry if you've only just joined us. We're going to make something a little bit like this. Now this is quite a narrow bangle because I wanted the whole thing to be festooned with beads from Starry Night. So that's one of my personal favourites. And the other one I'm just going to show you is a very old design in a gilt coloured wire with lots of different beads. There's uh, primarily garnets on there and some red onyx and some other bits and bobs. And that's a slightly broader bangle. Now, the depth between those two wires is 100% in your control. Sue says, lovely soup mix. I'd love to dig around in that bag. Absolutely. Auction off that bag of beads. <laughs> Perhaps watch this space. So dependent on how heavy a piece you want to work with is how far apart you're going to space those wires. So this is quite a deep one and it is by its nature really quite heavy. So I'm going to pop that one out of the way. I'm going to show you something that we're going to be making today. So I have prepared a base which we will work towards first, but just in case you get bored of my voice. And if I'm a little bit breathless today, I've had a little bit of an asthma flare up over the last couple of weeks. So uh, forgive me if I don't sound like I'm 100% above the water. I absolutely am. Everything is fine. Just a little bit breathy. <laughs> so there we go. That's what we're going to make to begin with. And we're going to do this with two lengths of the heavier gauge, which is the 16 gauge wire. Now I have one here. And what we're going to talk about now is sizing. So I don't know if you can remember school. It was a terribly long time ago for me. But uh, that whole pie thing is actually quite useful when you're making bangles. I know that this bangle fits me perfectly. So what I would do is I'd make sure that that's nice and round and I'd take my tape measure or my ruler and work out how far across or the diameter of that space we need to work with. So if we size this up slightly and just for the ease of simplicity call it three, what we would do for three inches across is multiply that by pi, which I'm going to use a calculator for because math's not my special skill. So three times 3.14 and that's as far as I can be bothered to go. Uh, it comes up to nine point something and I've just lost the calculator so I can't even use a calculator. So what I've done is I've added just under an inch and the reason we add an inch, number one is for contingency in case things go wrong, it's always good to have a little bit extra, but also we're going to be making loops on the end of those two pieces of wire that we're going to be working with. So the first thing that you would need to do is to cut from your 16 gauge wire I'm going to go for around about the 10 inches mark because I know that that will give me more than enough to create a bangle that will fit me perfectly. As I said, you measure across, get that diameter, multiply it up by 3.14 and then add an inch for contingency just to make sure that we have enough to make those little loops on the end. So we've got two lengths of wire to work with. I've already formed one into a circular shape but I'm going to grab in a round form now and show you that even if you have a round form that is smaller than the size you need, let's just move those beads out of the way for a second because otherwise I know what's going to happen and Rosanna knows what's going to happen. They're going to go on the floor. I have my 10 inches or so of that 16 gauge round wire and I'm going to give that a lovely warm through just to make sure that that's nice and soft and fluid and ready to work with. What I'm going to do is push this all the way around my beadalon round form. Now you can get bangle mandrels that are elongated. They are absolutely fabulous to work with. They're not fabulous for working with underneath a camera. What tends to happen is that you make the camera wobble around all over the place. And I'm not suggesting that that won't happen today because it probably will. So 
You can make the bangle as wide or as narrow as you like. The trick is trying to keep it a similar distance all the way around during our first laying down of that finer wire, but we will get to that in just a moment. So the thicker the wire, the more it tends to spring out from whatever form you use. Now you could use a tin of beans, you could use a sturdy whiskey glass or whatever it is you have to hand that's around about the right size for you. What I'm going to show you is that you can 100% use a form that is smaller than your desired shape, and very, very gently just tease that open. Margaret is in from Edinburgh. Hello, my darling. Rosanna says, Butterfingers, Runaway Beads, 100% every single day. Uh, I do that a lot. If I don't, Salem does it for you. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes, I tend to try and use um, beads in this fashion on a desk. But then cats don't really respect desks. My dogs, they tend to respect that space. If I'm working in the living room on my sofa, they do tend to quite get involved enjoying the uh, close space with all those beads as well as with me. So we've got two circles of wire that are now approximately the same size. Let's just tighten that one up a little bit so that they match. Zoe is in. I hope you're feeling a little bit better, my lovely. Great big healing hugs to you. Hi from Round Rock in Texas. Linda says you're fun to watch. That's jolly wonderful of you to say. I really appreciate it. Again, apologies if I'm a little bit breathless today. So we've got our two round forms now. Now these do need to be the same size. If you're a tiny smidge out, we're not going to worry about it. Nobody's going to call the wire police, but it does help if you stack them and try and get those to be as close to the same size as possible. Now what we need to do next is to create two solid rings. Uh, Zoe says, a little bit, my love. Hope you feel better soon too. Thank you very much, my darling. That's very kind of you. So we're going to form two connected circles of wire. Uh, Teresa's allergic, that's a shame. Cats love me, I am terrified of them, so we'll leave that there. Now your basic tools today are flush cutters. I'm using my bent chain nose pliers as I always do because they are so cool. And we also need a round nose set of pliers. Now these are basic pliers and they're very, very good to work with. What I'm going to do is to create two loops I just show you on one side to begin with I'm going to open this up as if it was a jump ring to begin with give myself a little bit of space to work with what we're going to do is to create two loops one on one end one on the other end and they need to be in opposing directions so let's start with this one it doesn't matter which side you start on what I'm going to do is pop those round nose pliers in turn that all the way around so that I have a loop that meets up as near as possible to the section of wire that it came from. So once you've just tweaked that just a tiny bit to get that to sit right, what I'm going to do is put a small angle on the end and it just means that that loop sits on the end of the wire. If I pass that over the top of the other side of the wire, you'll see that it's kind of imagining that that line continues in a straight line. So we've got one loop created and that's in the flat, as it were, to the desk. So if I turn the design around, I'm just going to switch this over because it's easier for me to do. We need the other one to come up and away. So they're at 90 degrees of opposition to each other. Now at this stage, before you go any further, it makes sense just to ensure that you've got that size right. You remember we added an, in an inch of wire for contingency. That might just be a little bit too much and you may end up with a frankly massive like this one, absolutely huge for you, bangle base. So this is going to be what we're working towards in the first half of today's live tutorial. We're working on creating this bangle base. It's a chaos bangle, because we all love a bit of chaos now and again. So you can see that the wires are passing in opposite directions. We've created a loop on one end for now. We're going to create a loop in 90 degrees opposition to that in just a second. Hello, Tori. Good to have you here. Rosanna says, I have four cats, frequently have them on my desk, although I did make a specific spot for them and they generally are pretty good. That's amazing. I've seen a lot of cat chaos. So I'm just going to pinch between thumb and forefinger and just test if that's going to be large enough for me. Now that's very, very tight. So I would just open that out a little bit and pinch again. That's quite tight. 
what you need to be aiming for is to hold the wire firmly and just check that that's plentiful in size. Now that is plentiful. I don't want to make this too tight because we will be layering up wires. And as we layer up the wires, we take a little bit of that inner dimension away. So if you put on lots and lots of beads, lots and lots of passes of wires, this will actually shrink down a little bit. So what we're going to do is imagine that we need to trim some away you would just pop in with your flush cutters and trim away a small amount. You can always take a little bit more off. You can't put it back on. Although you can always reuse such things. If this goes horribly wrong, you can make yourself a wine glass charm if it just gets smaller and smaller. So I'm going to, again, I'm just going to pinch at the ends of those wires together, put my hand inside the frame and think, yes, that fits really nicely. So what we need to do now is make that 90 degree loop. So back to those round nose pliers. And what I'm going to do is roll the loop downwards so that it sits inside the circle that we're creating. So I'll show you what I mean. Round nose pliers to the end of that wire and roll around. That was the sound of my pliers falling off because I was very close to the end. So I've rolled that all the way around. You can see that my two loops are at 90 degrees opposition to each other. So again, what I'm going to do now is bring the loop on the end of the second section or the other end of the wire so that that also sits as if it's following that little line that we created with the wire. Now this one is open and that's absolutely fine because the next thing I'm going to do is very very gently have a little interloper off you shoe. There we go. What we're going to do next is link these two ends together so I'm just going to pop that inside the other loop so if I undo that, that's why the two, 90, the two loops rather are 90 degrees to one another, because it means that you can loop one through the other. Once that is connected, we're going to close that loop up. The easiest way to do that is just to close it from the outside. It does mean that I shadow the work slightly. It might be trickier for you to see. So I'm just going to bring that slightly up. Hopefully you can see that those are now interlinking. I'm just going to close up gently the first loop that we created. And if you mash that shape, don't worry because you can reform that quite quickly. So what we're looking for is to have two flat completed circles of wire. So there's my first one. It might be slightly out of shape. Now, if you nick or dink the wire, don't worry because we're going to be laying, layering up so many other sections of wire that we're going to 100% cover that almost immediately. So what I need to do is now make my second loop. So I'm going to do this just a little bit more quickly. So again, on the first end of that wire, making sure that they're both flush ends, I'm going to create a loop shape. And then I'm going to draw that back out so that it sits on the end of the wire. So close that up as if the wire was going in a straight line through the centre of that loop. Sue says that would be pretty, just the one bangle and wrap beads on it as well. Absolutely. Once you learn the basics of wire techniques, there are so many things that you can take and run away with. So I'm going to make sure now that these are both the same size, because if you remember, I trimmed just a little bit of wire away. And I need to make sure that I get the same size. So I'm going to estimate that I took it to about here which looks to me about the same size. So we're taking off just shy of half an inch there. You obviously can be very mathematical, much more mathematical than I was, and give yourself exacting measurements to work with. So that looks like it's going to work really well. So what I'm going to do now is pop my first linked bangle down and get on with creating the second loop on the other end of that second piece of wire to create the second side of our bangle. So again, it needs to be at 90 degrees to the first loop. So the first loop is on the flat with that desk as we look at it now. So the next one needs to be at 90 degrees. So I'm going to roll that down inside the bangle. So you can see 90 degrees opposition, and then we're going to open up one of those loops after We've just added that onto the end. So you can see they're at 90 degrees opposition. We need to open one of those loops, not completely, just a little bit. So I've made a little bit of a shepherd's hook shape. I'm going to slide that through the first loop. And then I just need to close that back up. 
So don't worry overly if you do malform your frames at this stage. And give that a bit of a gentle squeeze to get that to sit down. You can always pop your tin of beans back in or whatever form that you used just to re-roundinate. So we now have a matching pair of closed rings. Now don't worry that they're slightly open. It's not going to be a huge problem because we're going to be adding on so many beads and wires that that won't even show. However, if you want to take a little extra time just to get that to smooth down and be 100% perfect, you can. So for the next part, you can decide just how far apart you want these frames to be. These are your two frame wires for the Chaos Bangle. If you really wanted to have them massively, vastly across, what I would say is instead of using your... 22 gauge wire or 0.6 millimeter as we call it here in blighty you could use a slightly heavier gauge wire as long as it goes through your beads it doesn't matter what i want to show you today is the chaos effect so i have ready now cut a couple of lengths of that lighter gauge wire I'm working with 22 gauge, which is equivalent to 0.6 millimetres, because I know it's going to go through pretty much all of my beads from my bead soup. And that one really wants to get in on the action, get back in the pot. So as long as your beads fit onto the core of the wire, you can use whichever wire you fancy. You could even mix and match with colours, entirely up to you. So the first step is always the scariest one. So what we're going to do is take one of our frames. Now the length of wire I have doesn't really matter because we will add multiples if you're comfortable wearing with nice long, oh, sorry, working with nice long lengths of wire, then absolutely do that. It's nicer to have fewer end sections However, I know that that is one of those things that people can find a little daunting with wire. So what I'm going to do is find the centre point. This is around about 14 inches in length I'm working with right now. And I'm just going to wrap that twice around one of those frames. So I'm laying the finer gauge wire over a random position on the bangle. And I'm just going to wrap that all the way around once. And then back over the top so that you've got two visible wraps to look at. So what we need to do now is add in our second wire. Now there are a couple of schools of thought with this design. You can start off by using straight sections across to set the distance between your two bangle frames. If you are obsessive about distances, then I would 100% say yes, do some straight lines across and then you'll be able to very easily measure and keep that the same all the way around. Have I done this with small stone chips? Yes, absolutely. I sold one last year which was absolutely festooned with probably about two or three hundred small stone chips. What I would suggest is using a heavier wire to create the chaos bangle first and then add in the chips with a lighter gauge wire so you get a sturdy base but this does just works so well with bead soup it's a perfect project so if we say that we wanted to go for around about three quarters of an inch which is a nice everyday wearable bangle what i'm going to do is go directly to adding some squirlies that's what these are they're squirlies i don't know what you call them little loops i guess actually would be a much more technical term i'm calling them squirlies so what i'm going to do is pinch the wire and just draw it around so i've got a little bit of a shape going on there I'm just going to move that around by hand and you can say that the wire wants to make quite a, a chaotic uneven loop so i've added a chaotic and uneven loop onto the section of finer gauge wire that's coming away from one of those frames i'm going to bring in the other half of my bangle frame now the first wrap is a little bit fiddly because everything wants to come undone and just fall onto the floor we're not going to let it what i'm going to do is pinch the finer gauge wire we've come from over the top of frame on the what is looking like the left so on the right we're going to go over the top as well so the wire the finer gauge wire is passing from over the top to over the top and i'm going to wrap that around again two times if i just hold that out to one side and draw the tail all the way around we're at about three quarters of an inch. Now what I'm going to do is just tighten up the coils that I've made on the second bangle frame, like so. And I'm going to just twist this around so that they swap sides for a second. So you can see we've set the distance, good afternoon to Michigan and to Stacy. 
we've set the distance between our bangle frames now so that's what we're going to need to try and keep that distance all the way around so what I would do now is take the tail of the what is the lower bangle frame wire and just draw that in a straight line all the way across to the underside so we're traveling now from the underside of the frame wire to the underside of the frame wire and I'm going to take that across at an angle I'm going to go to about 45 degrees before I wrap twice around the next piece of bangle frame so what I want to do here is to make sure that I've taken into account the angle I'm going to pinch very very firmly as I take the tail of the wire all the way around and I'm wrapping now just on the upper of the two bangle frames so I've gone two wraps that's nice and tidy and you can see how this is going to build up so it doesn't matter what direction you do your little squirrely curly loops in and they don't even have to be in a straight line across they can be at an angle as well what we're looking to do is to keep our two frames the same distance apart all the way around now your loops this is a chaos bangle your loops don't have to be the same size they can be whatever size you fancy you could even go for two I'll show you on the next pass of wire with two loops on one pass of wire so I need to pinch very very firmly keeping an eye on the distance between those two frames Carol is in from Philly wrapped around twice on the lower of those two frames I'm just going to tighten that up ever so slightly and push that tail wire underneath now because we're traveling from underneath on one side my underneath sides are always going to be plain because it makes for more comfortable wear later on so I need to again go from underneath to underneath and I'm going to wrap twice around the second frame now or the upper frame of the two as you're looking at it so we've got those two wraps I'm just going to tighten those loops up you can do this part of the tutorial with a heavier wire but my theory is always to try and keep things as simple as possible so I'm building up layers of that 22 gauge wire or 0.6 millimeter gauge wire the layers will build strength mc is in good morning gem hope you're having a great day watching from texas hope you're having better weather than we are jackie's in from florida ho ho are you having better weather i hope so so if you want to add two loops onto a pass of wire you absolutely can the more wire we add the stronger the frame will become at this stage it's all a little bit floopy and a little bit scary so if we put a little loop here we could have a second loop and this is the joy of working with that 22 gauge it's flexible enough I mean that looks a little bit like a heart so you could add in whatever kind of fancy flourishy detail you would like to add in now once you get to the beginning and end of our bangle frames we will need to link those so what I'm going to do is just rotate the design around a little bit so that I can because we've come from the top we're going to the top I'm going to wrap twice around the lower of those two bangle frames all the way around we don't have quite enough wire to get over to the other side so when you get to that stage rather than panicking just draw the wire around add an extra circuit around the bangle frame and trim away now normally I would be telling you to put the end of the wire inside the framework the reason I'm not worrying about it at this stage is because it's actually more important right now to build the strength of that bangle frame than it is to fret about the finished values so oh my gosh that almost says a word there that's a bit scary <laughs> hi I hope how are you my lovely where are you coming in from so what I'm going to do is continue with the other half of the wire in the opposite direction so when we go on the underneath side we're going in straight at, a, at an angle perhaps but those lines are straight we're not putting any loops in so if I take this across if you want to you can absolutely take a measurement I did have a ruler with me today look at me go so that's about three quarters of an inch from frame to frame so you could keep an eye on that and ensure that it's exactly the same all the way around if that kind of thing bothers you I'm just going to wing it so we're going to wrap twice around the upper of our two bangle frames right now like so with that wire coming over the top so what we need to do now is add one of our swirly swirly loops in you could go for two you could go for three you could just go for the one it's entirely up to you so I'm going to draw that now over the top of the lower of those two bangle frames pinch really firmly to keep that distance the same as we go 
wrap once wrap twice make that nice and neat and tidy and then a straight piece of wire underneath so I'm going to draw that around we've gone from underneath to underneath in a straight line over the top two over the top see now what's happened is I've pulled the wire too far to the right and it's squashed the frame down so to preserve the distance between those two bangle frames I'm just scooching that back a little bit so at this stage it is a little bit floopy and it does really make it a little bit not challenging it's not difficult it's just tricky to show so I'm going to create a loop because we're on the top layer uh, Hope loves watching me work. Thank you for sharing your talents. That's so kind of you. Thank you ever so much. I do appreciate the feedback. Makes my heart swell, it does. So if you find any little kinks in those frame wires as you go, because we warmed that wire thoroughly before starting our tutorial today, what you'll find is that you can just adjust that as you go. So it doesn't really matter how many you add on, the first go around is the trickiest because those two frame wires tend to want to fight you a little bit. So we've come to the other end of our section of wire. So rather than just going twice around, I've gone twice in a bit and I'm going to trim away the excess, that tiny little bit that's left over. And I'm just going to give that a tiny squeeze for the time being. So I'm going to show you with a second wire now over the top of the first what you would need to do is continue all the way around doing the exact same thing so the length of wire that we used earlier which i think was about 14 or 15 inches or so has gone around half of my bangle bearing in mind my bangle is set to be approximately three inches or so across so you would use a second piece of wire to draw all the way around what i want to show you is how to build up on top of that first layer so before you start building up, you need to create a nice sturdy base. You could use a heavier gauge wire if you wanted to, but I kind of like just having layer upon layer of the same gauge, which is that 22 round. So as I said, I'm just going to show you how to build up on top of that first layer. Now I have a slightly longer length of wire now. This is around about 18 inches. And again, it is round wire in the 22 gauge or 0.6 millimeter gauge. So what I'm going to do is just show you how easy it is to start off by creating that small loop design. You could if you wanted to, because it's in your hands, go for a loop in the opposite direction. So I've just made a couple of loops and I'm going to layer that over the top of the design where we've already done a layer. So just to remind you, you would need to go all the way around before you continue. So I'm just going to layer that double looped section over the top and I'm going to bring the end of my wire up inside the frame. The technique is the same but you may need to guide the wire so I'm showing you here it's kind of a sewing technique. I'm using my non-dominant hand to just guide that wire into position so that I can draw that all the way around. The technique is exactly the same. I've gone for a double wrap on the frame and then a straight line on the underneath. So if I just drop this down slightly, take the tail of the wire all the way through and go for a double wrap. What we need to do now is you can start getting tangled up and that's exactly what we want. We want chaos to prevail at this stage. So I'm wrapping a loop around one of my earlier loops. I'm going to draw that so that my first pass of wire over the top sits neatly around the edge just where those beginning and end loops were. And I'm purposefully tying very firmly here because when I go underneath with a plain pass of wire, I'm just going to tighten that loop up slightly. What I'm going to do is bring this diagonally across so that it comes to the other side of the loop. So we've got our beginning and end loop, our beginning and end loop, and I've kept those side by side purely because in the finished piece, they can be ever so slightly visible. We can cluster that up with so many beads that you won't even notice it. But my theory is that they look neater if they're closer together. You can put them on opposite sides if you want to. So I'm going to bring the wire all the way around. Now imagining that we have completed that second half. I'm going to take the tail of the wire through so that it wraps twice around the lower of those two frames. Margaret says, thank you for explaining everything so clearly. Loving this. That's really kind of you, my darling. I hope you're doing all right. 
tighten that little loop up and now you'll find that those two loops are tied together forever chaos always prevails in my jewelry you are hilarious your work is beautiful you know it so i'm going to add because we're on the top pass of wire now a lovely little loop i might add a second one going in the same direction going in the opposite direction doesn't matter looks a bit like knitting at this stage knitting is one thing i wish that i'd been able to do i am just far too stupid I can't knit. <laughs> I've tried. I can do the middle bit, but I can never remember how to cast on or cast off or how to purl. I can just do the middle bit. So we would need to continue all the way around, bearing in mind this would be our second layer now. I'm just going to quickly run a couple of pieces very, very speedily just to finish off this section of wire. So I'm just going to put a very small loop on here and draw that back over the top and if you end up with a very very tiny piece of wire to finish with see what it looks like see if it's going to hold sturdy and strong bearing in mind you're likely to layer over the top of this anyway we've got our interloper back excuse me one second excuse me could you fly away <sighs> thank you very much so i'm just going to open that out slightly by using my pliers as if they were reverse action and just open that so that it sits neatly at the same distance apart all the way around rosanna says can't knit either even though my mom was an expert and tried to teach me yeah my nan tried to show me but sadly i just couldn't really would quite like to learn how to do crochet <laughs> so you can see how this is going to build and build and build there's where we started off with our second layer so i'm going to just do a couple more quick techniques now as you go through this and you start adding layer upon layer sorry about the camera what will happen is it will be trickier to find places in which you can just snag that wire through so at the moment it's relatively easy to find places that that wire will sit as time goes by you're going to be clustering around the edges just a little bit more Everyone wants to learn from you, even creatures. That's hilarious. Can you imagine a tiny, tiny fly doing wire work? Oh my gosh, the pieces he could make if he put his mind to it. Wow. So I'm going randomly now, backwards and forwards. And you don't have to always go in the same direction. If you want to go backwards and then go in this direction again, you absolutely can. It's your design. Getting these pieces to link up is optional. I like it because it knits the piece together very early on. So passing the wire up inside the second frame bearing in mind you're attaching one frame to another frame constantly we're just going to pass that singularly underneath the reason i don't put loops on the underneath side is number one it's really hard to show that to you really hard to show that to you if that's on the underneath side uh, also it's less comfortable so with my chaos designs I tend to have just singular pieces of wire passing around the inside and in that way it's much smoother when you put it on and take it off it's much less likely to cause your skin any irritation Diana says try crochet with wire you've got half the technique down already I will give that a go my lovely I don't think I've ever tried the only crochet I do is a running stitch you know where you add a bead and you make a chain with it that's the only one i can do and i never was very good with that in wire i always used to use beading thread I've got some quite elaborate necklaces with that so when things start to get a little bit tighter you will find that there are very tiny holes that you can make in that frame by just pinching up those coils making them a little bit straighter you'll find enough space just to pass that end of the wire through all the way around pull that through nice and neatly and then across it goes on the back and continues on its merry little way so i'm just going to finish off this little section of wire here that we've worked with together give that a bit of a squeeze to draw those two loops together add last couple of loops i think i'm going to go for two go in opposite directions i'm just going to bosh that over the top it doesn't really matter they don't need to be neat what i am going to do is just hook that one ever so slightly so that it stays in a position where i want it to like so i'm just going to give that a little bit of a warm sorry about the camera wobble it's very very close to the work today sometimes what you will need to do is pull the tail of the wire through as if it was needle and thread just imagine you're sewing stuff together that's what i say to people who are scared of wire work don't be it's just sewing it's just sewing with different gauges of wire 
I could see a whole group of very small animals sitting on the edge of your workbench watching you. <laughs> Is there a video we can save with this technique? I love this. You will be able to watch this video over and over again at a point in time. It will be added on to the Jesse James Beads blog. So I'm going to just scooch that tail over the top. We've got just enough to make a nice secure save, I believe. And what you will find is that once the video has finished processing, it can take a little while after the live has finished, you'll be able to watch it again and again to your heart's content. So that is the base technique for making the chaos bangle. So that's a much wider one. This is a much narrower one. This is one that I filled in yesterday in preparation for today's video. I'm now going to grab some more of that 22 gauge wire, which I can't find the end of because why would I be able to? This is live. Why make it easy, huh? So I'm just going to take around about 15 inches of that 22 gauge or 0.6 millimeter wire. And again, it's round. I tend to work in round wire because it is less worrisome for people who are newer to working with wire. After it's over, it's save on FB and YouTube says Stacy. Yes, it absolutely does. That's other Stacy. Stacey without an E says it's going to be available on YouTube, which I, of course, completely forgot about. So I've got my short section of that 22 gauge round wire. Can we see the finished piece again? Yes, there are a couple of examples for you here today. So this was made with the Starry Knight, the Van Gogh box, which I thoroughly recommend. It's absolutely stunning. I meant to wear the earrings, but my brain is, is not 100% with us in the room today. So they are also in the other room my brain is hanging out and this is a very old piece from several years ago but the process is very very similar so what we're going to do is decide on adding a bead now to make your life slightly easier what I tend to do is work from the center of the wire and in this way I can work with longer lengths of wire without making my life really really hard so I'm just going to hold the, this section of wire across the top and again that's 22 gauge and it's around about it's actually only about 12 inches and I'm going to do the exact same technique I'm going to find a gap on that frame wrap on twice so that's once and twice and then the wire disappears underneath where it will wrap onto the other side after a straight line in just a moment. What I want to focus on is what we're going to do on the top. Now with this design you can push those loops around a little bit. I'm going to randomly grab from that bead soup mix. So I've gone for a very chubby rondelle in a beautiful green, almost a sage green. Allow that to zip line down and sit in position. Now the beauty of working with the lighter gauge, the 22 gauge wire, is that it enables me to push that bead into the wire frame. This means that you don't have lots and lots of very proud beads. You can have them completely proud of the design if you want, but you're also able to just very gently snuggle that in if you wish to. You've got options. So we're going to go for a straight line across the top this time, adding a bead, and we're going to find a position where we can tie on with our lighter gauge wire. So I'm going to spin that around twice, take it to the other side. Underneath it doesn't do any loops, and on top we're going to stop looping and start beading. So again, this is literally sewing. We're sewing things on. You like gold one, says Sue. Thank you very much. That was uh, a long time ago with, oh, it's red-coated chalcedony, I remember now, and lots of different types of garnet. I do love a gemstone. So I've gone for a round bead this time. It's a hematite colour, no idea what the bead is, because that's the joy of bead soup. It could be literally anything. So an alternative to setting in a straight line is to add a loop. So I'm going to push the bead down where I want it to sit. What I'm going to do is push the bead down and circle that wire all the way around the edge of the bead. So you can see it's going back on itself to begin with. I'm just going to hold that from the side instead and then draw the wire all the way around. So if I just drop that down a little bit, you should be more in focus. We've just wrapped through the bead and then around and then it continues on to the other side. So that's just an option before we do our double wrap on the frame wire again and take that wire underneath. So what you'll find with this is that the wire can lift. You'll just need to push it down into position. It's an option, just makes slightly different aesthetic values. So I'm going to find another position through which I can thread the end of my wire. 
imagine it's just thread and you're simply sewing at this stage what I am going to do is smooth that wire through it's got rather warm Fred the fly has returned for another look we're going to choose another bead that one chose me itself but this is the one I want to work with so this is a square crystal I like how these work in designs like this because it takes you by surprise just something a little bit different so very very gently making a nest for the square bead I'm going to take the tail of wire to the second frame the upper of our two frames what you can do if you prefer is pull that through with pliers once that loop of wire that you can see just by the tip of my pliers right now once that gets very close to the frame you might need to just support that slightly to ensure it goes exactly where you want it to otherwise it might end up in the wrong little gap not that that's a problem it's a chaos bangle after all so a plain wrap of wire underneath bring the wire round underneath wrap twice and we're going to add a bead now where's that one that went oh this is a, a faux cat's eye in pink that's what's coming next and these are all completely at random so you can see that these are not sitting exactly centrally they're sitting offset what you could do I'm just going to finish this bit and then we'll talk about options. I'm just going to sit that down into a, a little gap that I've nestled together and finish off with a wrap around the upper of those two frames. Draw the tail all the way round and you would continue to wrap underneath it with plain and on top with those beads. So we're going to just pop back up here for a second. We're going to grab a hold of the bead soup. So what you could do if you wanted to is start with some slightly larger beads perhaps or frankly huge beads put some big ones on if you wanted to have a slightly broader frame like we demonstrated with earlier and then infill around with gradually smaller beads and what you end up with is a whole lot of bead and a whole lot of glorious glorious chaos so let me get the bead suit back out of the way with its lid zipped because if I don't and it goes on the floor that will be at least three weeks of tidying so as I say, you could then move on to smaller beads to infill the gaps. You can go through colour graduation. When you're working with a bead soup, you can be completely inspired by the beads. Now this was a fairly random grab that I had of beads that were round or rondels. There's a couple of little spaces in there as well. Let's have a ganderoo. Why don't I just drop those down onto the table for a moment? So all of these beads would work perfectly in a design like this rice shaped beads are very very cool because you can get them to nestle in places that you perhaps wouldn't particularly want a round bead in so you can get that to sit down on the next layer up basically you just keep going until you're happy so the old garnet and chalcedony one is quite spacious there's lots of gaps where you can see light through it and i quite like that the van gogh one is really quite filled and this one has some wraps which are multiple beads so this has a, a pass of wire across the top which has got three beads there's a double the singles and they all tend to go on the slant and that's just how it went when I made it because every single chaos bangle I make is completely different so that is the crux of your chaos bangle with bead soup i hope that you've enjoyed that as much as i do and i hope that you are then able to go away and have as much fun in the future making this design over and over again with a different result every single time so your uh, main wire for the bangle frame is 16 gauge which is equivalent to 1.25 millimeters you're adding on wire is the 22 gauge which is 0.6 millimeter and you can layer that until you can't possibly get any more what is the angel wing bowl i don't know i've had that since the beginning of time it's just been i don't remember where i got it from i'm sorry it is very cute though <laughs> it's just um just clay just clay can't can't even remember where it came from but it's very useful for holding beads so i really appreciate you hanging out making time to join me today if you have any questions i'm going to be around in the comments now and i will just check back to see if there's anything that i missed 
any questions just give me a tag on Facebook and I will do my best to answer for you again apologies for the slightly breathy nature of today's class asthma is being a little bit tricksy at the moment um, I'll be here for a little while just yet and uh, this is another of my bead soup creations just some of my favorite bits and bobs from last year all strung together which obviously sometimes doesn't sit straight but I like it anyway so I look forward to seeing your variations of my chaos bangle you can also make frames in heart shapes or crescent moons or whatever you fancy and infill in exactly the same way I have used this technique now for about seven years it was one of the earlier wire work techniques which I developed through and I absolutely adore the fact that bead soup is perfect for this bead soup all the way. I am going to sign off for today and I look forward to seeing you again very very soon. If there's anything in particular that you would like me to bring with you here at Jesse James Beads let me know. I'm Jem, I'm from the United Kingdom and I'm going to go and have a little bit of a sit down. I'll see you guys very very soon. Muchest love. Bye for now.